the dating of the last Homo erectus fossils has been turned on its head, with new dating showing that Homo erectus existed until 40,000 years ago in central Java, at a site called Sambungmakan. According to a researcher contacted by this channel, there is still potential for a chronological overlap between Erectus and Sapiens, as there is nothing to indicate that the Java Homo erectus, dated to around 108,000 years ago, were the last of their species. There is unpublished research that backs up the dating of another paper suggesting the fossils have a minimum date of 40,000 years and a maximum date of 60 to 70,000 years. Erectus fossils from Nondong and Sambungmakan, in central Java Indonesia, are considered to be the most anatomically derived and youngest representatives of Homo erectus. Gamma-ray spectrometric dating of three of these Homo erectus skulls showed minimum age estimates of around 40,000 years, with an upper age limit of around 60 to 70,000 years ago. The possible late survival, to around 40,000 years ago, may have led to interactions between Homo erectus and modern humans who colonized Southeast Asia soon after the Toba eruption. This means that the Homo erectus of Java, survived the Toba volcanic Armageddon, and would have been contemporaneous with the earliest Homo sapiens in Southeast Asia. In another study, electron spin resonance, and mass spectrometric U-series tests, were used in the dating of fossil Javanese Homo erectus teeth. The tests resulted in fossil ages of 27,000 to 53.3 thousand years ago. The range in ages reflects uncertainties in uranium migration histories, according to the paper. Thus, both of these date ranges raise the possibility that Homo erectus overlapped in time with anatomically modern humans, aka Homo sapiens, in Southeast Asia, and indicate that Homo erectus survived well into the late Pleistocene. Indeed, genetic evidence suggests that there is DNA from a mystery source in local human populations, and some speculate that this mystery DNA could be from none other than Homo erectus. I will have more on this at the end of the video. It may be possible that later forms of Homo erectus are much more closely related to modern humans than currently assumed, and might even be responsible for the Denisovan ancestry, seen in today's island Southeast Asian populations. Moreover, island Southeast Asia was clearly a very crowded place around 50,000 years ago, occupied by many different archaic human groups, on many different islands. But, just as with the case of the Neanderthals in Europe, shortly after we arrived there was only one survivor, Homo sapiens. During a break between glacial periods, about 120,000 years ago, the sea level was around 20 to 30 feet higher than it is today, because of cycles that cause the tilt in Earth's orbit, and drive climate fluctuations. This coincides with the time when modern humans first migrated out of Africa in large numbers, possibly due to drought in East Africa, flooding of their homelands, and or because other human populations outside of Africa were weakened by the warming climate. Although modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, are the only surviving human lineage, many other humans once walked the globe, as recently as 30,000 years ago. DNA studies suggest that the Denisovans were surprisingly diverse, and may have been the last humans other than Homo sapiens on Earth. Island Southeast Asia covers a vast expanse of continental shelf and active subduction zones. Cutting between the island landmasses, the Wallace Line separates Sunderland and the Eastern Island Arc into distinct ecological provinces. This boundary has led unique fauna, including pygmy hippopotamus, pygmy elephants, giant lizards, and dinosaur-like birds. Java is separated from Sumatra by the Sunda Strait, but the islands become one landmass when the sea level drops to about minus 40 meters, about 130 feet. The Sunda Strait is also extremely volcanically active, with the infamous Krakatoa volcano rising in the middle of the strait. West of the line, in Sunderland, Java yields many fossils of Homo erectus. But as exciting as it is to think of the last stand of Homo erectus being an epic battle, with Homo sapiens storming the beaches of Java from boats, in classic D-Day fashion, their end was probably not that exciting. East of the line, Flores Island provides one skeleton, and other remains of Homo floresiensis, aka the Hobbit. Luzon Island in the Philippines, has another pygmy fossil hominin, called Homo luzonensis, that apparently hunted pygmy hippopotamus. Sulawesi Island also preserves early hominin archaeology, including tools. Early hominins apparently responded favorably to changing island conditions for 1.5 million years, only becoming extinct during the period in which Homo sapiens colonized the region. 
Remarkably, a mandible found off the coast of Taiwan, which is most likely from Homo erectus, has been dated to as early as 10,000 years ago. The precise classification of the mandible, known as Penghu-1, is disputed, some arguing that it represents a new species, Homo tsichangensis, whereas others believe it to be the fossil of a Homo erectus, or possibly even a Denisovan. The fossil was dredged up by a fishing net, from the seafloor about 200 to 400 feet below the surface of the ocean, about 15 miles off the west coast of Taiwan. The channel was part of the Asian mainland during the last ice age, when sea levels were much lower. Climate fluctuations mean that the island was frequently connected to the mainland over the last two million years. Taiwan was last connected to mainland Asia about 10,000 years ago, when sea levels were about 150 to 200 feet lower than today. Sea levels have risen since the last ice age, and have submerged the area where the fossil was recovered. Analysis of trace elements in the jawbone suggests the hominin probably lived between 10,000 and 190,000 years ago. But the jaw and its teeth look unexpectedly primitive for this time, even for Homo erectus. The fossil jawbone appears even larger and more robust than older Homo erectus fossils. Surprisingly, the fossil jawbone exhibits traits similar to early Homo habilis, including the shortness and width of its jaw. If you watch my video on Homo floresiensis, you may recall that it has been suggested that Homo floresiensis was also derived from Homo habilis, due to similar skeletal proportions. These findings suggest there were several different groups of archaic humans living in South Asia at the same time, some more primitive than others. Then modern humans dispersed into this region, and came across a diverse group of hominins. This is a very different, complex and exciting story, compared to what I was taught in school. The evidence suggests that multiple lineages of extinct humans coexisted in Southeast Asia before, and after, the arrival of modern humans in the region. DNA studies suggest that the Denisovans were very diverse. And a recent study adds a new twist to their mystery. DNA from a large sampling of Southeast Asians suggests that the ghostly Denisovans may be not one, but three distinct kinds of human. One of which is almost as different from other Denisovans, as they are from Neanderthals. Indeed, while the Denisovans lived alongside other humans for millennia, one group may have outlasted even the Neanderthals, who disappeared some 40,000 years ago in Europe. According to the study, these Denisovans coexisted and mixed with modern humans in New Guinea until at least 30,000 years ago, and perhaps as recently as 15,000 years ago. The provocative find joins a number of recent discoveries that continue to point to a stunning diversity of hominins in ancient Asia. Suddenly, it's kind of crystallized that the center of diversity for archaic populations is in island Southeast Asia. Most people of Asian descent carry some amount of Denisovan DNA, but it's particularly high in Melanesians, whose genomes are up to 6% Denisovan, and live on the islands around Papua New Guinea. To dive deeper into this mystery, researchers sequenced 161 genomes from 14 island groups, across Indonesia and New Guinea. They combined this data with 317 genomes from around the world, and compared all of the data to genomes from both Neanderthals, and the Siberian Denisovans. As they lined up the ancient Denisovan DNA with the Denisovan genes found in modern Papuans, the team expected to see just a single spike, where modern Papuan DNA clustered. Instead, it split into two strikingly separate peaks. Astonishingly, the researchers believe the two spikes represent two distinct groups of Denisovans in New Guinea, that are genetically distinct from the Denisovans of Siberia. One group of Denisovans, which mixed with modern humans who now live across Southeast Asia, split from the Siberian Denisovans some 363,000 years ago, fewer than 50,000 years after Neanderthals split from their common ancestor. When researchers first decoded the Siberian Denisovan DNA, they noticed that the ancient DNA in modern Melanesians was distinctly different from the DNA extracted from Denisova cave. But the shocker of this new study is the proposed third group of Denisovans that seem to have exclusively mixed with the ancestors of humans in New Guinea. This mystery group mixed with modern humans thousands of years after both Denisovans and Neanderthals were thought to have gone extinct. However, this mystery DNA could explain another intriguing fossil. A skull from the Koh Swamp of Australia, which may preserve an almost UN-modified Homo erectus form. 
the features are considered by some anthropologists to indicate the survival of Homo erectus features in Australia, until as recently as 10,000 years ago. The Coswamp people had large, long skulls, with very thick bone, up to 13 mm thick. Their faces were large, wide and projecting, with prominent brow ridges and flat, receding foreheads. They also had enormous teeth and jaws, some even larger than Homo erectus. This all means that this mystery group, possibly Homo erectus or Denisovans or a hybrid population, found a way to cross deep waters with strong currents, an obstacle scientists have long thought only modern humans with boats could navigate. My own hunch is that there will be more highly compelling research to come out of this region soon.